Welcome back. We're now doing the extra amateur extra element four sub element four delta. And this is some confusing stuff, so some of it you may have to memorize. If you want to know more, you may have to search the web. You could you can get lost in some bunny trails on this one. Question one: What is meant by the blocking dynamic range of a receiver? That is the difference in decibels between the noise floor and the level of an incoming signal that will cause one decibel of gain compression. Question number two, which of the following describes problems caused by poor dynamic range in a receiver? Spurious signals caused by cross modulation and desensitization from strong adjacent signals. So if you have a poor dynamic range in a receiver, being around other stronger stations or even spurious signals could cause your radio to go kaplooey. What creates intermodulation interference between two repeaters in close proximity? The answer is the output signals mix in the final amplifier of one or both transmitters. Which of the following is used to reduce or eliminate intermodulation interference in a repeater caused by a nearby transmitter? The answer is a properly terminated circulator at the output of the repeater's transmitter. And you can think of a circulator as a filter of sorts. So a properly terminated circulator at the output of the repeater's transmitter. I want to filter that mess out. This next one's going to take a smidgen of math. So what transmitter frequencies would create an intermodulation product signal in a receiver tuned to 146.70? So that's the number you're looking for, 146.70. That's where you're listening. When a nearby station transmits on 146.52. So you're looking for what transmitter frequencies would intermod between this right here. So we're looking at the second harmonic. So bringing the calculator up, we're going to go over this one really quickly. So we start with 146.52. That is the first transmitting station. Now you multiply that times 2, and you're going to get 293.4. Now, when that is subtracted from 146.34, and, and, and some of this is trial and error, you can see that that one produces a signal in the 146.70 range. Well, you just received that signal. It, it's interfering with you. So the next one will take the higher of this second frequency, and that's 146.61 megahertz. Multiply that times 2. That's the second harmonic. And then you subtract the transmitter, 146.52. And then again, you get 146.70 megahertz. Now, you may have to use some trial and error, or you can memorize the question and answer. I don't know when I've ever needed that information. What is the term for the reduction in receiver sensitivity caused by a strong signal near the received frequency? That is desensitization. And that happens in a lot of your less expensive rigs because stronger signals are going to cause it to have a real hard time picking out the desired signal. Which of the following reduces the likelihood of receiver desensitization? That is to insert attenuation before the first RF stage. So if you're able to attenuate, then, and that's before the first RF stage, which is in the radio itself, then you have a better chance of being able to pull out 
the desired signal. What causes intermodulation in an electronic circuit? Now these are nonlinear circuits or devices. And at one point in time, I had a window open to show you that a linear circuit is not going to create a lot of intermodulation. But in a nonlinear circuit, you're going to see a difference of these frequencies at, at lowering levels the further out they go. So this is what it would look like in a linear circuit, and this is what it would look like in a nonlinear circuit. What is the purpose of the preselector in a communications receiver? That preselector is to increase the rejection of signals outside the band being received. That preselector is going to increase rejection. So it's, all, it's, it's sort of like a filter. What does a third order intercept level of 40 decibel milliwatts mean? with respect to receiver performance. Now you just have to memorize this answer. That's, that's just an unfortunate definition. A pair of 40 dBm input signals will theory, theoretically generate a third order in a modulation product that has the same output amplitude as either of the input signals. Just have to memorize that one. So a pair of 40 dBm, and you can remember that, 40 dBm up here, 40 dBm there, theoretically generate a third order intermod product that has the same output amplitude as either of those input signals. Intermodulation, that's a tough one. It's a tough one, and it, you could take a whole course and and just learn a little bit why are odd order intermodulation products created within a receiver of particular interest compared to other products those odd order products of two signals in the band being received are also likely to be within the band so you have to watch out for those odd order products because they might be right next to you what is the link margin in a system with a transmit power level of 10 watts, which is plus 40 decibels per milliwatt, a system antenna gain of 10 dBi, a cable loss of 3 decibels, and a path loss of 136 decibels, a receiver minimum discernible signal of negative 103 decibels per milliwatt, or decibels compared to a milliwatt, and a required signal to noise ratio of six decibels. We have to go back to the calculator on this one. I, I honestly don't think I've ever had to use this in the last 13 years, but here it is. So the first thing that you have to do is you must add all of your gains together. So we have a 10 watt, which is 40 decibels, plus we're going to add the system gain of 10 decibels. That gives us 50. And then the receiver with the minimum discernible signal of negative 103 dBm, you are going to add that because that is part of your gain. So plus 103, and we're going to add this to our memory for just a moment. Now you take your losses. So you have three decibels of loss, a path loss of 136, and six more decibels. That gives us 145. So if you do... 153 minus 145, you come up with 8 decibels. That's a lot of work. I could probably just remember 8 decibels and then say, I'm never going to use this again. <laughs> sort of like Kate MRD said, algebra. When was the last time I used that? Now, algebra is useful, but, you know, not everybody's going to enjoy it.
and he said he's bad at math. So what is receive, the received signal level with the transmit power? Uh, here we go, 10 watts, which is plus 40 dBm. A transmit antenna gain of 6 dBi, receive antenna gain of 3 dBi, and a path loss of 100 decibels. So we have only one loss this time. So what I'm going to do is clear memory, and I'm going to put 100 decibels in the memory. Now, let's add up all of our gains. That's your loss. Let's add our gains. So we have 40, which is a gain. We have 6 dBi, which is a gain. And then we have 3 dBi, which is a gain. That gives us 49. So if we subtract 49 from our memory, we should have 51. Now, you got to keep in mind that that path loss, path loss was a negative. So I did that backwards. You would have to remember. So really, it should have been 100 in the negative 100 in the memory. Then when you add your gain, you wind up with 49 is your gain, and you subtract or you add your gains. Add your gains, then you recall. There's your negative 51. So I did do that one backwards. Now, here is a very difficult one. Took me a while to find the correct formula for this, but we have a minimum discernible signal of negative 100 dBm. That's decibels per milliwatt. And the answer is in some kind of watts. So let's convert it to watts. So I found this spot on the web at Newark. And this is the formula that we're going to use to make this conversion. So let's go back to our problem. We have negative 100 dBm. We have that minus 30 is negative 130 divided by 10. So we have negative 13. So our power in watts is 10 to the negative 13. Well, 10 to the negative 13 is also the same as, if you were to move that decimal place of 10 to the negative 13 to go 10, negative 12, which is in the Pico range, then you actually have to take away a decimal point and you get 0.1 times 10 to the negative 12. God knows, I hope that that translated in your minds to make some sense because there's no using the calculator for this. Uh, we're gonna, actually going to get the calculator off the screen now. But that comes out to 0.1 times 10 to the negative 12, which 10 to the negative 12 is a pico. That's a millionth of a millionth picowatts. That one is not that friendly of a problem. There's only one on the test. So memorize your answers, the best I can say for that one. Um, there is a chart that you can look at below here that starts to show you as the decibels per milliwatt drop by 10, the decimal place, it's like dividing by 10. So you divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10, and, and that decimal place winds up being 13 places over. So that particular problem works out it is what it is. It's the last one in this section. I hope that some of this has been helpful. You know, part of learning is seeing it, hearing it, and reading it. So I hope that those three and maybe showing as minimum as they were the examples for this. I've done my best. So as this test goes on, there's going to be some difficult stuff. And I'll do my best to show you how to find the answers. I'm Rob, W1RCP. Thanks so much. Like and subscribe in 73.